Hello, I'm Gordon Henderson and I'm just going to give you a very quick demonstration of my Ruby 816 board, 65816. What we're looking at is Ruby Terminal. This is a SDL application running on my Linux desktop. It's basically acting as a serial terminal to the Ruby board itself. So we've got a standard USB serial cable goes straight into the Ruby board. Now we can talk to it and send commands over to it. So I think I'll start just by hitting reset on Ruby and we can go through the whole process from, from boot. So there you go. So this is this is a boot. The uh, top part is the host processor, which is the AT Mega. But everything after this line is now generated by the uh, 65C816. And we're in this sort of basic uh, Ruby OS, which is a Acorn Moss lookalike cat. Uh, we're in the uh, the RAM disk, uh, cat or ls or dot. I mean, traditionally in Acorn land, you abbreviate commands by dot, and the first command is cat, and you can abbreviate that by the shortest thing, so dot. And there is a website called star dot because these are star commands. So this is the underlying operating system. It allows us to to load various programs. I've got a few things here. I can load EH Basic, AppleSoft. Um, there's some text files here. If I go into uh, this is BBC Basic. Now, although this is BBC Basic running is Basic Four designed for a 65C02, it's running on the 65816 in emulation mode. The uh, operating system knows to switch into emulation mode, so we can only see a um, a bare minimum of uh, memory. And in Acorn terms, you typically do high mem minus page. That's hexadecimal seven two hundred. So we've got uh, just over twenty nine kilobytes of uh, memory free. There's nothing, nothing really new there. Uh, a little basic program. And that's this 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 all goes over the serial port. There's nothing nothing terribly special there. I'll just get out of that by filling the memory. It's the quickest way to get out. On this particular um partition, the SD card is uh currently only got four partitions on it. So this is this is my BCPL uh work. So I'm just gonna launch the BCPL bootstrap. This is actually a C program written in CC65 and this is responsible for initializing the memory, loading the BCPL libraries and the BCPL interpreter and then we can jump into the BCPL command line interpreter which is written in BCPL. So that's BCPL runtime system loaded. We're still running the C program if I do that, we're now running a BCPL program. And this is a very simple command line interpreter that I've put together. Mostly at the moment to help me debug and bring up the system. But eventually I'll make it a lot uh, a lot fuller featured. So we could run a program, I think. Yeah, so there's a hello program. That's written in BCPL. If I show you the program, that's the program itself. Very simple program. This it would normally be in an include file. I've just taken out exactly what we need to make the BCPL program run because it makes it compile a lot quicker. The include file is actually about 20 kilobytes and it does take a few seconds to, to load that include file. And if I compile that, BCPL compile HW2, give it a file name, the last two parameters, size equals 10 and bin, are to do with the amount of memory that it allocates internally. And I want the BCPL compiler to output a binary file. The default is to output a text file, which is hex decimal numbers. So let's just compile that. There we go. Our compiler took a few seconds to load because it's about 45k long. But once loaded, it compiled the program very quickly. And if I just run that program, yeah, there we go. So there's, there's our Hello World program. The Mandelbrot program, that's the BCPL source code that I've mucked about a little bit with. 
Anyway, I'll just uh, run that Mandelbrot program for you, which I compiled uh, earlier, just to give you a, a little something to look at at the end. And there we go. Thanks for watching.